let's look at the sum to infinity. Now, sum to infinity is quite self-explanatory. It is the sum of all the numbers, of all the terms actually, from the first to the infinite term. And now obviously, we are, can never get to infinity, not in this lifetime at least. And uh, we're going to look at the two major options. We get the arithmetic sequence that is added, or the ar arithmetic series. And if you consider this, the arithmetic series is always adding a constant. No matter how big that constant is, unless it's zero. If I'm adding a constant number every time, every term, next term is just going to be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So if I keep on adding that number to the sum, it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So the arithmetic sequence will always go to infinity, okay? Unless it is being subtracted. Okay, if it is being subtracted, in other words, I'm adding a negative number every time, then it's just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and not smaller to zero, smaller, until it gets negative, and then it's going to get negative, 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 bigger, bigger, negative numbers, until it goes to negative infinity. So the sum to infinity will always be infinity or negative infinity, depending on whether my common constant difference is positive, or whether my constant difference is negative. Okay, so that means in the geometric sequence, that is where the, um, the difference actually lies, in the geometric sequence. Now the geometric sequence actually has three options. In the geometric sequence, we obviously are looking at our constant ratio. Our constant ratio can either be less than negative 1 or it can be bigger than positive 1 or it can be well, a bigger or equal okay? or it can be somewhere in between less than 1 but bigger than negative 1 and those are the three options we're quickly going to just look at and why would uh, only one of them converge well, consider the um, concentration being negative, or bigger than negative one. That means that, first of all, because I'm multiplying with a negative every time, my first term will, might be positive, my next time term will be negative, then it will be positive again, then negative, then positive again, and that will continue, continue. Since I'm then multiplying with a number bigger than one, each term will be bigger than the previous term. Okay? or at least equal to the previous term, or larger. What that means is every time I'm adding a bigger and a bigger and a bigger number, and in this case I'm just first adding it, then subtracting, but then adding and then subtracting. So this one is actually, um, um, we are unsure where this one is going. It is not, we can't be sure whether this thing is going to positive infinity or negative infinity. Now let's look at it when it's bigger than 1. Well, bigger than 1 is actually the simplest of them all to understand that every time I'm going to add a number that is going to be bigger than the previous number because I got that number by multiplying with a number bigger than 1. So this number is bigger than that number because I multiplied it, I multiplied that number with a number that's bigger than 1 or equal to 1, so they'll at least be equal. So in the end, I might as well have added at least numbers that are equal to each other for an infinite uh, number of times, which will give me infinity. Now, when, however, my constant ratio is less than 1 and bigger than negative 1, each consecutive term will be smaller than the previous term. So my terms following on top of each other, each term will be less than his previous term. Which means as it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, 
I'm adding a number that's less and less and less and less until eventually, in infinity, I'll be adding zero. And then I will converge. Where in the previous one, I diverged. Okay, well, let's just look at the formula just to see. Okay, maybe it's easier to understand out of the formula. So we have Sn is equal to A1 minus R to the power of N divided by 1 minus R. <coughs> and here we can see, if we look, and it's, and it's all about this term, this term is the only one with an R to the power of N. So if I look at R to the power of N, if R is a number that is bigger than 1, if R is larger than 1, then obviously, or equal to 1, obviously R, and just so you know here, 1 minus R, R is not allowed to be 1. Otherwise, I get, I'm dividing with a, a 0. I'm not allowed to divide. So R must be bigger than 1. So let's skip the equal. R is bigger than 1. Which means every any number that's bigger than 1, if I take an exponent, uh, the exponent of it, uh, as the exponent increases, as n goes to infinity, R would go to infinity as well. And if R is less than negative 1, now, same thing, we'll still go to infinity, we're just not sure whether it's going to be positive or negative infinity, because every next term will be, uh, one will be positive, one will be negative. Okay? So it's unsure, it will either be positive or negative infinity. But, if I look at r to the power of n, and r is less than 1, but greater than negative 1, then you see we, we get a number. So let's just take, for example, uh, the number 0.9. Okay, so let's take 0, 0,9. And let's just see what happens if I take that to an exponent. Let's go big. To an exponent 1,000. What answer is something like 1,7 times 10 to the power negative 46. That means that comma must move places 46 places, which means it's zero comma and then 45 other zeros before I have my first digit. Okay, that's a minute number. That's as close to zero as I can get. Well, not really, but that's very close to zero. So I see, even if I'm very close to one, as my exponent grows, so will my, and that would be the same answer if it was negative 0, 0,9. I would have a number that's very, very small. So maybe that is just a quick example of why we can conclude that the geometric series will only converge if my constant ratio is smaller than 1 and larger than negative 1. Then my geometric sequence will converge. Now we might just ask, what will happen to the formula? What will happen to the formula? Well, let's just have a look. The sum to infinity means that I am going to add the first term to the second term to the third term all the way up forever and ever and ever. Okay, so let's even do another few. Another term 4 would be added and term 5 will be added and, and then we'll just go on forever and ever. Okay, so, this means that since it's the arithmetic sequence, sorry, geometric sequence, I've got my first term, plus my first term multiplied by my constant ratio once, and then twice, then, oh, to do that better, twice, and then three times, then four times, Okay, and that goes on forever and ever. 
So doing in the same way, let's multiply this whole the whole uh, equation with a constant ratio one more time. In other words, and, and you'll see again, I'm going to write it underneath the, um, the like term. So if I multiply A with R again, I'll get AR. If I multiply A with R again, uh, AR with R again, I get AR squared, and this goes on. And I'm sure you, you see what I'm doing. Uh, the only difference this time is I'm never stopping. This is going on forever and ever and ever. And let's make another mistake. I'm trying to multitask. And now, once again, I'm just going to subtract these two terms. So I'm going to take my original uh, equation minus my second equation. And I see a minus 0 is just a. These two subtracted cancel uh, or add up to 0. These two subtracted add up to 0. These two subtracted add up to 0. These two subtracted add up to zero. These two subtracted add up to zero. And if I'm going to go on forever and ever and ever and ever, obviously I'm just going to get zero. This time I never stop. So taking out my constant, a uh, common factor here, I get one minus r is equal on the other side just to a. And then I get. If I multiply or divide both sides with a 1 over r, I get, there is my formula for the sum to infinity. Very simple formula. It is um, my first term divided by 1 minus my constant ratio. My first term, and here just remember, r is not equal to 1. We cannot have r as equal to 1. Remember that, very important. Okay, and this can only be zero if my r is eventually going to have an exponent that's so big so that r to the power of that exponent is virtually zero. Okay, so that um, the last term in this equation, the second equation, really doesn't matter, but there is no last term anyways. Okay, here we go. There we get our formula then for the sum to infinity. Next video we'll look at some examples.